Hey everyone, my name is Hans. I'm the head of growth for wizard.co where we help you do prospecting a lot faster using LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And today I would like to talk to you about some tips for making, uh, making sales more effective, for having a more effective sales process when you're working remote, when you're working from home. So uh, maybe you've transitioned to working from the sofa, maybe you have a nice home office from which you're working, but uh, working from home as a sales responsible or or business development responsible comes with uh, with unique challenges, um, challenges that um, both we at Wiza and me personally, we have experience with. So I wanted to share some tips, some technologies and some, um, some other ways for you to make that sales process more effective and more efficient. So as you can see, um, these are our sales tips and we actually had um, at Wizard, we have we have a blog and we had um, experts weigh in on uh, what their best tips were. Now, these were experts from from HubSpot, from Gong, but also from our own team. Um, these are all, all people with um, with a lot of experience in sales. So I really think that these are tips that um, that that could be very helpful to you if you're just transitioning to uh, to remote sales. Now the first one is from Jonathan Kostet at uh, at Gong.io. Hope I'm pronouncing it right. In Dutch we would say Gong.io. Now he mentioned getting information to flow in your team, which would allow you to start your week strong with actual pipeline reviews. Um, so what he what he means by that is making sure that everyone has um, all the information available freely. So instead of when you're working in an office, you can simply as a, um, maybe as a team manager, you can sit in on calls with your sales reps, or you can tap on someone's shoulder as a sales rep and ask, "Hey, do you have this?" Uh, this deal site, this information, just uh, do you have this info for me? When you're working from home, when you're working from different locations, then that is not the case. So what Jonathan um, advises is to make sure that, you're, um, that you have automations or processes in place to have Hans, I'm the head of growth for the sales responsible or you as, um, as a founder, as, a, as someone who owns a business. Uh, to make sure that you always have insights into um, the most important facts, um, figures, numbers that go into the sales process. Second one is from Ali Tamari um, from Market Beyond, but this tip was mentioned on the Sales Hacker podcast. Um, and, and Ali mentions building something together, which I think is a very good tip as well, because in the end, um, when, when you feel involved, when you really feel like you're owning something as a team and you're owning something together, you're always going to be more motivated. So instead of just going through the motions and, um, repeating a process that, that someone else has put, has put in place for you, instead just work together as a team in the, um, you, when you have experienced salespeople that should definitely, um, be, be something that I think is, is really powerful. Because you all have experience, you're all you're all grown people, you're all adults, and you have your own inputs. And something I've found is that when people from a lot of different backgrounds they come together, you're really able to teach each other something with your unique insights and unique uh, skill set, which I think uh, really plays into this. When you build something together and everyone pitches in, you don't all, um, only feel involved as a sales responsible but um, you also end up learning a lot from each other, I think, and you actually become stronger as, as a business because of it. The next tip is, about, is from Matt Hamber at HubSpot, and he mentions to not forget about training, which I think is a great tip as well. And what they do is once a month, their team runs an hour-long call review meeting. And uh, he mentions it's a great way to run remote-friendly enablement and training exercises. And I think... Doing these reviews is very important. Uh, it's something when I was first when I was first starting out in sales, it's something I found a little bit awkward where we do, would do either role playing or you have a manager who would review your um, your 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 sales conversations. But it's something that is really helpful to get that outside perspective. And maybe there are some ways, some questions that you're not asking, or some questions that you're asking which you shouldn't be, or some words that you're using too often. Those can be just simple tricks, 
but um, it can really help you in uncovering things that you wouldn't be able to find when you're just going through the motions yourself. Um, and training can be challenging when you're working from home, when you're working as a distributed team. But um, while it might take a little bit more effort than, than normal, is definitely something that you should be investing in. Then Steven from Wiza, he mentions that um, you should encourage competition and find ways to, to save time, but maybe have um, a dashboard with each other's numbers in there. Or when that takes too much time to set up, maybe just have each person give an update in, um, in Slack each day in a, in a separate Slack channel. So you can keep process on each, on each other and on each other's targets and maybe have a daily winner, weekly winner, monthly winner. Um, and then add some prizes for the winners there as well, because salespeople, sales responsibles, they're, they're competitive. And as a leader, you should always try and encourage that competition. Then um, a tip for myself is to try and learn to save time. And um, that's not, not only, of course, to work more efficient as a sales responsible, but as well as a manager, I think it's really important to, for example, set up uh, Gmail templates when you're working with Gmail or when you're using Pipedrive or Huffle or they have options to put in a template. And what that does, it doesn't only allow you to respond a lot quicker to uh, maybe common objections or, um, or just general general responses that you're getting to, for example, your cold outreach, but it also makes sure that when you're onboarding a new sales rep and that onboarding has to be done completely remote, then you can make sure that they um, that they're already performing at a certain level. So. Um, when you when you want for example when you have common objections maybe to your pricing or to hopping on a call you're you can decide what your sales reps are going to say to that objection so you can have a template or maybe three four different versions of that 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 template so that answer to that common objection and you can provide those to your new sales responsible so you'll know even when maybe you're you're a thousand miles apart you'll know that uh, they're responding the right way and it will also help them in um, in getting up to speed in your company it will will shorten that training cycle that onboarding cycle as well then for sales technology when you're working remote when you're working from home technology probably becomes even more important in helping you work more efficient and having a, a, a better, uh, more optimized sales process or sales cycle, uh, even from yourself, as it says here. So the first one um, are Gmail filters and templates. So what you can do if you go into um, your, your Gmail settings, uh, you hit advanced and then you have the templates option that you can enable. And then simply from when, when you're making a draft, you can then save it as a template. And then next time when that, for example, the same objection comes up, you can respond with the template. Uh, it helps you uh, work faster and more efficient. It can help you as a manager to make sure that you know what your sales responsibles are replying. So you can maybe have a one hour meeting and you can decide, okay, this is what we want to respond to, uh, to these objections. Your team can pitch in, you can all co together come up with a response. You can save that as a template and then your team can use that to both work more efficient and to make sure that, for example, the, the company voice gets gets carried out. Um, and there's a lot of benefits to it. Then there are also there are also filters that you can use. For example, when there's a, a automated reply, you can say, OK, whenever um, an email has out of office in the um, uh, in there, just mark it as red or um, maybe move it back into into the outreach cycle. There's a lot of ways that you can use those filters and they will help you work more efficient. If you're on Outlook, I haven't worked in Outlook for a while, but they have template options as well. Um, or when you're just working from your CRM, though, uh, they nine out of 10 times they have those template options as well. And they're very important. You're working more efficient and uh, managing your sales team as well. 
Then Crisp AI is um, is a great program that um, that I've used in the past and now um, during when I'm recording this um, the Corona crisis the the COVID crisis is still going on so people um, have to work from home and Crisp AI what they do is they mute background noise so when you're working with kids in the background uh, it's especially helpful or when you're working from a uh, maybe later in the year when you start working again from a coffee shop, from, from a bar, from wherever you would like to work, then Crystal AI will help in muting background noise so that you can have um, you can have sales calls without any uh, any distracting noise in the background, which also makes things look a little bit unprofessional. So Crystal AI is definitely something that you would like to um, that you would like to try out. And now during these months, they're um, they're still for free. Wiza, uh, I'm a little bit biased here because, hey, I'm the head of growth for Wiza, but I really believe it will help you work a lot more efficient. We managed to really shorten that prospecting cycle. So on average, people are, sales reps are spending between 15 and 20% of their weekly time on prospecting. And we bring that down by around four to five times. So what you can do, you head over to Sales Navigator, you find prospects that are interesting to you, you hit export emails with Wiza, You'll have a list of valid emails, so no more validating your emails, and you can um, you can reach out at scale. So uh, using Wiza will definitely help you work more efficient, regardless of uh, of your location. Then Google Sheets instead of Excel. If you're working from home, maybe you're not going to have access to Excel. And um, I also believe that working with Google Sheets will help you um, over time will help you work more a bit more efficient because it's just so easy to share. You can give your company access to it, and then maybe all the sales reps can work from the same Google Sheet to track their metrics. Uh, maybe as a team manager, you can track your team's results from there. Or when you're cleaning data for cold outreach, you can do it in Google Sheets and then uh, just really easily switch from there to um, to the email software that you're using, for example, Wizard Connect. And um, it, I found that it generally is better in opening CSVs and processing data when it has special characters in there. So maybe when, when someone has Asian characters in their name or um, letters with accents on them, then Google Sheets usually does a better job of processing those than uh, than Excel does. Then Zapier or Integromat for automations, I think, is is really powerful as well. When when you have certain types of emails coming in, you can automatically uh, push them into your CRM, or you can set up an automation that says, okay, when I mark an email as important, then automatically import it into my CRM, or automatically forward it to someone else. So you can you can have different types of labels, maybe needs follow up, and with Zapier you can automatically set a calendar reminder, for example, um, or when you mark it as hot lead, it gets pushed to um, to the next to the next uh, cycle in uh, in your sales team, in your sales stage, or uh, there there's a thousand and one use case for Zapier and it will really help you work a lot more efficient. Plus it's no code, so it's easy to set up as well. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes to set up um, common automations and it can save you hours in a day. Story Express is a personal favorite of mine. I used to use uh, Loom, and, but now I'm using Story Express. This video is actually recorded in Story Express, which um, what it does, it's a Chrome extension. You simply hit the Chrome extension, you can start recording video. But the, um, the cool part about Story Express is that they allow you to then embed those videos either on your website, but also in your email. So they also sit in Gmail. So maybe when, you're, um, when there's a client asking for more information, you record a really quick video, you embed it in Gmail and say, hey, um, I think it's easy to explain this by, by, by video. So here's a quick video. It will build a lot stronger of a personal connection. They will see your face with it. It helps with, um, with, it helps with sales in a lot of ways. So I think Story Express is a really interesting solution for, um, for having a more effective sales process in place. The Vidyard is um, is a similar solution, so they also help with videos. They have a few uh, other specific use cases. Story Express is a little bit more of a um, early stage product, while Vidyard is more of a developed product, but it also reflects in the pricing. 
So they have a lot of options. They have enterprise solutions, which could be uh, could be interesting. Uh, so I suggest that um, that you check them both out to Story Express and Vidyard and pick the one that works best for you. Then communities and training. Uh, as a sales professional, it's important to always, uh, first of all, stay up to date, um, to keep developing, keep training yourself. But also, especially when you're working remote, to find communities that you can that you can relate to, because um, it's easy to get uh, maybe get a little bit lonely or to feel to feel stuck. And when you have people that are in the same position, you can communicate on a level that um, that makes sense to you, and you can relate to each other's problems, and you can find uh, find solutions to those problems. So here are a couple of communities that um, that I think are important to salespeople. Saleshacker.com, so their website, you have a lot of really great information on there. They have podcasts, they have webinars, on the month webinars, they have um, a lot of uh, interesting reads and downloads. But they also have a really, um, really interesting LinkedIn group. I think it's one of the better LinkedIn groups that I've been in. Um, the way it's moderated, it's, it has been done really well, so they really focus on um, weeding out spam. Uh, there's a lot of LinkedIn groups that are open and people just use it to, um, to post their content. But in Sales Hacker, it's really geared towards um, being helpful and, um, and, and, and fostering interaction. So making sure that people actually get value from it. So if you're in sales, I think the Sales Hacker LinkedIn group is, um, is something that you have to, have to join. Sales best practices is another sales group that I think is, is very interesting. If you're a sales professional, as you can see in the top right, there's over 300,000 people in there. There are really interesting discussions in there, really interesting questions. And there are always people in there that are, um, that are helpful and that are willing to, um, to respond to any questions that you might have. So if you're a sales professional and you want to connect with uh, with people in the same situation, then sales best practices is another group that you should check out. Ben's Mark Training, uh, Ben Hippoli, I hope I'm not butchering his name. Um, he is a sales professor at a university in Florida, and he has a ton of knowledge about sales. And he fairly recently started a YouTube channel, but already has a lot of videos on there that I think are really helpful. And he can really help you in taking your sales game to the next level. Um, and he's as an actual sales professor, so who would be a better person to help you with sales? Then Belkings.io, they are a, um, a sales agency, an outreach agency, and they also have a podcast which I think is, is very, very interesting. So their, their experience in the outreach game, and they've been around for a long time, they really know what they're doing, they're on top of their game. And they also have, um, have a very interesting podcast uh, where they invite guests who, um, they, they have a lot of different varieties in, um, in the guests that they have on there, but mostly uh, obviously it's sales related and people are talking about how to build sales teams, but also sales tips on how to um, become better at sales. So I think it's uh, it's a very interesting podcast that you, uh, that you probably have to listen to if you're in sales. Then bonus tips for working from home for a more productive day. As I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I've been working from home for a couple of years now and I've really found these tips to be most helpful and hopefully they will help you out as well. So listen to gaming music might be something that um, wouldn't be the first thing that comes to mind when you're talking about working from home or working more efficient from home. But first of all, research um, confirms that music it stimulates the brain um, and it helps you in focusing, especially when you're working on repetitive tasks. But gaming music really stands out. And the reason, um, when, when you find out what the reason is, it makes a lot of sense when you're playing games. Games are made to keep you playing them for a long time. So when you're, um, when you're playing that game, it just makes sense that they keep you hooked on the game. So it would only make sense to have music in there that motivates you to keep playing. And it doesn't, for example, distract you all the time. Or just, it needs to bring you into a certain flow state. So gaming music really helps with that. 
Then make sure to block distracting websites. I know when I first started working from home, I was spending a lot of time on Twitter, uh, a lot of time on other websites, news websites, but you can actually block those. And I think you need to be a little bit tough on yourself, have some discipline there and uh, block those out. Those, um, I call them attention thieves. And um, you, you can either block them or limit your time. So for example, you could say, okay, I only want to spend 15 minutes per day on Twitter. Um, there's also uh, Chrome extension that actually track that time for you. So they track for you, okay, you're spending uh, this much time on Twitter. And if you have an iPhone, you've probably tried out some apps that do the same, that track for you how much time you're spending on social media. The same is true for um, for, for PCs. You, know, you have Chrome extensions or, or, or downloadable software. They can help you track how much time you're spending either on each task or on each website. And then you can decide to actually block those websites during working hours to help yourself get focused. Then um, also track your time. So not only um, see where you're spending, like which websites you're spending time on, but also which tasks you're spending time on. I know for myself, when I'm doing cold outreach, I'm spending a lot of time on cleaning my data. So you have your Excel sheet or your, um, your CSV file with the data in there. And then I'm taking out um, like the, the ink as in incorporated behind names. Uh, company names are making company names sound a little bit more natural, so they're casual name. Um, but I'm also, some people have emojis next to their name, uh, which, which I usually filters out, but every now and then one slips through and you need to take those out when you're using personalization to not make it look, look weird, basically. Um, so when, when you're finding these tasks that you're spending a lot of time on, then it will be worth trying to maybe block out, um, one hour, uh, the next morning to try and find a way to automate those, those tasks. So I've been looking into Excel formulas that can help me for example um, make sure nothing is in all caps etc and those are just some basic ideas but whichever task you find yourself spending the most time on either ask in the LinkedIn groups that I mentioned earlier how people uh, work more efficient uh, ask your team or your team leader how they how they tackle those or look at Zapier Integromad or uh, whatever works to try and automate those tasks then setting a schedule, I've found that to be very important as well. It can be tempting to, um, to have your day be, be dictated by, uh, by maybe your partner or by, by uh, what someone else's day looks like. Or uh, maybe, maybe you think, you know what, well, tomorrow I'll wake up at 9, next day I'll wake up at 11, next day at, uh, at 12. But to, when you're having a fixed schedule, so a schedule that you would have when you're, uh, when you're working from an actual office, that really helps in being more productive. So uh, I always wake up at the same time um, and I always work the same hours. The, um, I, there's of course flexibility. So the good thing when working from home is that if something comes up, maybe a doctor's appointment, you can actually go there and then uh, you can catch up on, what, on that time earlier or later. But really having a fixed schedule to, to, um, to use when working, that really helps you stay more productive. Then what's next? If you want to be more productive in working from home as a sales responsible or as a sales leader, then make sure that you check out wizard.co then to help people work more productive. We're, um, first of all, we're giving 20 free credits. But if you mention that you've seen this video and you, you hit us up in the chat, then we'll give you 50 extra credits so that you can have 70 credits, which equals 70 valid emails which you can use to start generating email lists from LinkedIn Sales Navigator, which will help you in your, um, in your prospecting and your, your sales outreach.